In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Pyth uh, Pythagoras theorem here. So this right here was uh, coined by a Greek philosopher, and uh, among other things, I mean, he did a lot of other things, but uh, one of the things he did was to figure out how uh, different triangles related uh, in terms of geometry. So in this case, uh, Pythagoras theorem um, is, I think uh, a lot of students at least, they struggle with it at first when they first hear about it, but it's actually quite important. It can help us out immensely. First of all, I want to talk to you uh, about it in that it only works for right angle triangles. A lot of students try to use this incorrectly, okay? So it's really important, I think, to remember it's only used for right angle triangles. In other words, you know, one angle is 90 degrees. That's what we say. If it's a right angle triangle, it means one angle is 90 degrees. So for example, I can sh I can draw you a right angle triangle, hopefully. Uh, maybe I'll use my little straight line tool to make it look a little bit nicer. So there's one, I'm gonna make this one straight up. Oops, maybe I'll move it just a little bit so it matches a little bit nicer. And then another angle going maybe down like this. So this right here is some sort of straight angle here, or the, sorry, this uh, right angle right here in the center. Now, of course, my uh, triangle isn't perfect here, but uh, there it is, something close enough. So normally for a right angle, we normally draw this one right here like this. We put a little square like this. That tells us that angle there is 90 degrees. That's what that little square means. So for a right angle triangle, uh, we can name different sides. Now there's one of them that's going to be the longest. The longest side is always the one opposite to the 90 degrees. So if you're looking at the 90 degrees, if you're at this angle here, you'd be looking out at this side here. That one right there is called the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is the longest side. So that's the important thing about this. Hypotenuse is the longest side. In this case, we're gonna call that C. We're gonna call this side A, we're gonna call this side B. Now it turns out it doesn't matter if you call this one A, this one B, or if you call this one A and this one B. Those don't matter. What does matter though is that C needs to be the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side. That's always C. Okay? So hypotenuse equals C. Those are the same. Now the Pythagoras theorem says uh, how these different side lengths are related. So if we look at how long this side A is versus how long B is and how long C is, he actually figured out a very clever relation. It just says this, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. That's it, it's that easy. Okay, so c squared equals a squared plus b squared. That is so important, I think it'll get little uh, triangles, uh, sorry, little stars around it too. So that's Pythagoras theorem. That tells us how they're related. In other words, this longest piece here squared is the same as the sum of this one squared plus this one squared. I've seen some geometrical proofs that are done, you know, by actually drawing a square going across here and a square here and a square that's this side right here like this. And you can look at the area of each of them and it turns out it really does work. You can also prove it using a uh, Euclidean geometry, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'll uh, trust that for maybe another series of videos later on. In this case, you'll have to trust me. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. That works. So we can use this in uh, an immense amount of different uh, examples. And basically anything to do with triangles, but remember, right angle triangles. Okay, only right angle triangles. In other words, where one of the angles is 90 degrees, then this works. If it's a weirdo triangle, you know, like this right here, maybe, uh, oops, maybe I'll draw it looking a little bit differently. Maybe something like, maybe something that's a non-right angle triangle. So I don't know, maybe something that goes like this, for example, something like that then this Pythagoras theorem does not work for it, okay? It won't work for that sort of thing. So what you have to do, you have to be very aware of only using right angle triangles. So let me give you an, uh, an example. Maybe we'll do one here. So let's say we have uh, some sort of, let's see, maybe a pole. So some sort, you know, you're trying to figure out maybe the height of a pole here. Okay, so this is some sort of pole. And the question is, what's the height here? In other words, the height, or maybe we're going to call this h in this case. So height h equals what? In other words, you know, what's, what's the height? I don't think I made that very clear with my uh, writing here. Okay, so we're trying to find the height of the pole. But we don't know it. 
But maybe you're told that uh, from the top of the pole, maybe you string a, you know, a piece of rope or something like that. Maybe you know how far this rope actually goes. Maybe you know the length of your rope here, and maybe you know how far this is. So what if you're told that um, this length right here is, ooh, I don't know, let's say five meters here. And let's say you're told that the, this length right here, that one is 12 meters. So the question could be, how high is this? So it's important to actually work it out and actually try to make this uh, something you can work with here. So what I mean by that is that here we want to actually take your uh, 12 meters and your 5 meters and somehow use those to get the height. Well, first of all, we have to check that this is a right angle triangle. Hopefully they tell you that this pole is sticking straight up. In other words, this right here is a right angle. So that means that this 12 meters, that's the hypotenuse then. That's the longest one. And the relation that we're going to get then is going to be well, that the hypotenuse squared equals one side squared plus the other side squared. In this case, they named it differently. I want you to see that. That's why I named it H on purpose. It doesn't have to always be called A's and B's and C's. Very rarely is it so nice. So you just have to know the hypotenuse is the longest one. We're going to call that C for this equation here. And the other two sides just go on the end here. So in this case, then, I can write my relation. The longest side, which in this case is 12, Longest side squared, that's the hypotenuse, is going to equal one side squared plus the other side squared. Now I don't know this h value. Do you see how now I can use the algebra though to solve this? Well, 12 squared is 144, and 5 squared is 25. So I'm just trying to figure this out. I'm going to use some little uh, handy algebra tools here to try to get me h by itself. So to do that, I'm going to have to do uh, 144 and subtract from that 25. So in other words, 144 minus 25, that's going to give me h squared is going to be well, 120, uh, 144 minus 25, that's 119. So that means if I want h, it's going to be the square root of 119. If you want to be mathematically complete, remember there's always a plus and a minus here, because it turns out, uh, you know, obviously I'm doing a square, by the way, is taking a square root, but it turns out a plus or a minus value would also work. Because you could put a minus number in here and square it and still get 119, or you could put a positive number here and square it and still get 119. So technically it's plus and minus square root of 119. However, in real life, of course, we're going to assume that the height has to be positive. So in this case right here, uh, we'll say that it's approximately, it turns out if you do this on a calculator, you get around 10.9 meters. However, it's not exactly 10.9, so I'm going to put a little dot here to denote that it's you know, approximately 10.9 meters. Okay, so that tells us the height of the pole. Okay, just by using some very, very simple trigonometry, you can do this. You can do this, by the way, with shadows. It's really cool, actually. If you want to find the height of a building, if you just look at how far the shadow goes, and if you can measure something to do with uh, angles, you can actually work out the height of the building. So there's a lot of really clever ways you can actually do this. Okay, if you knew this angle, uh, I'm going to be showing you in another set of videos later on about um, right angle trigonometry. So this is going to use what's called sine, cosine, and tangent. But it turns out with that angle and with this set here, you can figure out all sorts of stuff. Okay, so with right angle triangles, Pythagoras theorem is one of the important tools you can use. In this case, I didn't give you any of the other angles, but you didn't need them. You Knowing one side and another side, you can always figure out the other side. Okay, so all you need is two of the three sides, and you can work this out. You're in business, so to speak.